All of that just makes me so angry because it's like I'm just such a good person and it's like why did all of that have to happen to me like I'm in Miami and my Percocets getting stolen all type of shit. like why do stuff like that gotta happen and I'm ladies if you feel me help me sing it out Yo, I put some ice on her head I let her take it in bed she wasn't going to plan I put a shit in the van she gotta move with a friend First she went back to her man, give a fuck yeah. I just put a wagon in the driveway, you know I did When I shoot my shot, it's still whole wild hey babes what's good before we get into this juicy video i wanted to show you guys this wig that i ordered from ash and mary here so this is their transparent highlight blonde wig it's 13 by 4 and it's 30 inches 180 percent density so this wig is so full it's so cute i love another thing is this here came packaged so well and they gave this gift so this is a robe that they sent it has their logo on it also sent this bonnet to match so last night i slept in my robe and i slept in my bonnet and when you order with them you will get a robe included in your order so i love that man i love me a silk robe so this color was so cute it's really long it's such a cute robe so make sure you guys shop with them so this here is 100 percent human hair it's super soft it didn't have any smell no odors the hair came really fast so make sure you guys shop i'm going to show you guys how my hair came packaged how my hairstyle is installed this wig it was super easy and fast and let's get into it if you don't say it the record give a fuck yeah, yeah. i put some ice on her hair i let her take it in bed she wasn't going to plan i put a shit in the van she got to move with a friend First she went back to her man give a fuck yeah. i just put a wagon in the driveway you know i did when i shoot my shot it's still a wild way it's going in me and love sick on sitting sideways breaking tense used to be an anti-social nigga now i'm making friends i just got a mention not in text and it's a beach front did she bring it four friends i know i hit at least one got a mall tent and bought a pool and they greased up police in my city man i keep it about this greased up me and capo trying to leave i'm walking Piece of Easter. Ain't nobody make it too much money on the beach stuff. But I be for rapper cause I'm never with the sweet stuff. Shotty came from Mexico, she know she got the sweet stuff. Hey, niggas ain't got respect. Niggas just got accept. I put that top down. I love my cardio down. Yeah. Hi Williams, no X. If you don't say it direct, give a fuck. Rex, I live my jeans and they next to me. Never tell me my teeth, I call her in you guys saw how this hair came packaged how easy it was for my stylist to put on make sure you guys shop ash merry wigs i love this wig okay i wore a lot of their wigs but i love this wig like i love this color like i've never ever got a wig with this color with these highlights like it's super super fire so i am going to be linking this direct wig down below i'm going to add links to their other wigs down below links to a coupon code you can use down below so make sure you guys check out my description box i love you guys so much and now we're going to get into this vlog because i know y'all want this tea period hey babies what's good it's your girl chanel and i am back with another video so guys i have to put you on okay so before we get into this make sure you guys hit that subscribe button make sure you guys give me a like make sure you guys comment down below because that helps my channel grow guys and y'all like this video really it really took a lot for me to make this video right here because it's just like a lot of what i did in florida and for my bbo was promotion and it's so crazy that like promotion versus no promotion just how much different the experience was so just a little background you know the first time i got surgery i did pay top dollar and went to a top board certified 
double board certified plastic surgeon who were at the time now he has his own practice but at the time he was working at long island plastic surgery group which if you do your research it's one of the largest longest standing with no deaths plastic surgery groups in the world so like he's really a top-notch surgeon you understand like top-notch um experience licenses schooling so i really paid for all of that and it was in long island new york so getting surgery in new york is like getting surgery in beverly hills you understand getting surgery in miami is like getting surgery in dr so you know but i it was a few reasons why i went to miami like i said like miami surgeons they do give that that look that you kind of go for my surgeon is really great like he i love his lipo i love his breast lips. i love 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 his work but again his prices are a little out, uh, are outrageous because he's in new york but he's worth every penny <laughs> but it's like i was just like damn 17k and up for a bbl or you could get your bbl for 4500 and wake up alive all that like listen i'm gonna save me some coins so that was my decision and i'm not really sure if that was too much of a good idea then i have a such a large following now i create so much reels and i knew that whoever i would work with or whatever i do i would be filming so i thought like whoever i work with we might as well come into collaboration because i'm gonna be filming you and if i film you the reel is gonna go up and i'm not tagging you so you're probably gonna be maybe upset or pull away or want to promote but it's like i'm not promoting you on my platform so it was like let's just collab so after that it starts to get real so all in all i have been in contact with a coordinator well at, with the manager at Avanna plastic surgery i was in cooperation with her like she was nice you know sometimes she would take a long time to write back on certain things but i was just trying to get for the benefit of the doubt um you know so you know i was in contact with her so when i was booking my airbnb booking my flight i was running everything by her because i know normally when you get these surgeries they want you to stay like 7 to 14 days or whatever but i was telling her she was saying you can come monday you'll have your pre-op monday surgery tuesday and you can fly home on friday and i was like really i'm gonna be okay to fly she was like yes i promise you you can do that um i was so i was telling her like right before i booked my flight i was like hey are you sure i could Fly in Monday, leave Friday, and that's 100% safe. She was like, yes, you're good to go. Before I booked my Airbnb, I said, hey, just want to make sure that um, Monday to Friday is safe. She said, yes, you're good to go. I said, okay. So I'm like, okay, so I book it Monday to Friday. Boom. All of this will make sense in a minute. So anyway, let's talk about when I actually flew into Miami and I got there. So my flight was great. Flew Delta, boom, boom, boom. Landed. I got to Avanna Plastic Surgery. Now, when I walked into the surgery center, I'm like, hi, because I just have a bubbly spirit. Like, if you guys don't already know, y'all see just how lively I am, my soul, my spirit. Like, I'm like, hey. They're like, hi. I'm just like, okay, they already turned me off right there because I just feel like any surgery center, like whoever you hire at the front desk, they should be top notch. Like fuck the influencer, fuck social media, all of that. Like whoever you have at your front desk at a surgery place, I feel like they should give top notch service because people are coming in with so much anxiety. I wasn't scared or I didn't have fear, but there are women who are full of fear, full of anxiety, or they're spending thousands of dollars and you know service should just be top notch like i've been running businesses since 2014 i have yet to have a bad review you've never saw nobody say girl you ain't never shipped myself there's, there's nobody who can ever say anything like that to me because i don't play with people who spend money with me and support me and i feel like businesses just be bugging because it's like i'm looking in like hey i got all the energy y'all like hi it's like if you don't like your job you got to get a new one especially in this field like People with nasty attitudes in the medical field and health fields just be losing me. So they're like young Spanish girls. They don't like their job, apparently. So that really, really turned me off. So anyway, she just like, yeah, come over here. You got to get weighed. And then she just got an attitude. She don't know what's going on. She don't even know that I'm here for promo. But it doesn't matter. I don't care if I'm there for promo. Like, you should treat anybody with respect that walks through these doors. Because they're spending thousands of dollars and... They're trusting your surgeons, your facilities with their life. Like, why do I have to tell y'all that? Like, that's weird. So, um, so now I go sit down in the room and then this camera guy comes in and that's clipped in my first one. Well, he likes Chanel and I'm like, hey, he's like, okay, I'm gonna be a photographer and we gonna film some content. I'm like, okay. 
So he's like, can we just do replay everything that you just did? Like, we're going to have you walk in again. We're going to have you come to the front desk, things like that with the camera rolling. I said, okay, no problem. So I walk back out with my suitcase. I'm walking back in. We got to reenact. So I walk up to the same girls. I'm like, hi. I'm like, hey, they like, they get up. Hi, how you doing? Welcome to Vienna Plastic Surgery. Can I please have your name? I'm like, bro, 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 bro. Y'all bitches is fake. Like, y'all, you did not just have this energy. Like, you really didn't. But okay, like I said, I'm real nice. I'm just holding it down. Because I told this story to somebody else. And they said, I really would have been like, why you ain't have this energy? <laughs> but I ain't even saying that. I'm just like, nah, what? Like, you a whole nother person right now. Like, you really another person. Like, what's going on? But okay, so it's just like everything is for the media like i don't like that like i really don't like certain people their influences and their head is big so they probably feel like yeah i get treatment uh -uh. like why do you have to know that i have a following to treat me with respect because the people who watch me and that i'm gonna influence they may not all have my following so they're gonna come come here and get treated like what like i don't like that i really i don't like that so now that i was turned off now Everything else went okay after that because now everybody know I'm here for social media. Everybody want to be nice. Uh, uh, boo. Okay, yeah. So now, the next day. Mind you, I was in contact with Genesee or whatever because I've already read a lot of reviews on Miami surgeons or surgeons in general where, like, they'll have you come to the surgery center and they have you waiting for hours and hours. When I got my surgery in Long Island and paid top dollar, when I walked into the surgery center, my process began. I took a drug test. Um... I talked to a nurse for like 10 minutes, met with my surgeon, walked me up. I was on the table within 30 to 40 minutes of walking in for my surgery time. Okay? So now, at, at so I, I asked this lady, I, this part I was trying to use my influence as, you know, have some pull. I'm like, hi, you know, I don't want to be in the surgery center all day, respectfully. Like, can I please be the first surgery of the day? And she was like, absolutely. Like, you're a VIP client. We're going to make sure that you do your surgery first thing in the morning. He's actually going to do you at 530 in the morning. First surgery of the morning. That I'm like, okay, that sounds great. Because I really don't. Because I've seen things where people be at the surgery center till 6, 7 o'clock. Not maybe at this place, but I've just heard that. And I'm like, I'm not doing that. You understand? So, she was like, yes, your surgery is scheduled for 5.30. I'm like, okay, are you sure? She's like, I'm 100% sure. 5.30 a.m. We need you at the surgery place. Uh, and I was like, okay, so I got up at 4.30 in the morning. Now, if you have surgery at 5.30 a.m., you have to really stop eating super early. So I ended up be not being able to eat, like, past 7 p.m. That's super early to not be able to eat, like, after 7. Like, I'll be eating after 7. So anyway, I, was, I couldn't eat after 7, so that was already crazy. And then I ended up getting at 4. I got up at 4.30 in the morning. Got to the surgery center at 5.30 I got to the surgery center at like 5.20. So I'm super early for a surgery of the day. Um, it's a few girls there. Yo, I'm sitting there. I literally, I never laid on the table until like 9.45 p.m. Um, 9.45 a.m. So I literally sat there for like four hours. Mind you, I had drivers coordinated. I had my caretaker coordinated. I had all of this stuff coordinated because I literally asked, will my surgery start at 5.30? Yes, 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 but it didn't. So overall, when I was there, I was just trying not to be nasty or get tight and just trust god's timing like so that's why i really held it down i relaxed because i like everything is on god's time to me like i don't want to be fiending to go into a surgery like if that man is taking his time he needs to wake up a little more he needs some coffee like do what you got to do to help me have a safe successful surgery so i was trying to be cool but like after a few hours i'm like come on so I called the lady. I never really called her throughout this whole experience yet because she's like the general manager. She don't even really work there. She works like under the CEO. So I called her. I'm like, hey, it's 9 o'clock. I still didn't get my surgery. She was like, what? You you haven't had your surgery? Like, you should be out of there already. I'm like, I, I didn't have my surgery yet. She was like, oh, no. Like, I have to make some calls. So we get off the phone. After I called her, all of a sudden, things start rolling in, rolling in. And it's like, why did I have to call this lady? Like, why do I have to? Like, why does everybody have to be reminded? Oh, my gosh, she's on social media. Like, fuck the social media. Like, I'm a paying customer, like, before everything. So, anyway, um, but before that, my general anesthesiologist, my anesthesiologist came in or whatever. I didn't even like my the anesthesiologist energy, and that sucks because that's the person that's putting me to sleep. So, he comes in. I'm not going to lie. He looks kind of young. Like, he had these Yeezys on. And I'm just like, 
I don't know. Like, I'm not trying to judge him, but I'm like, wait. So I'm so he just comes in. He's like, hey, how you doing? I'm like, hi. So he's rolling in the IV. I'm like, hi, how are you? Who are you? Because, like, introduce yourself with Steve. Like, what's going on? He like, he's so-and-so. I'm your anesthesiologist. I'm like, oh, okay. First he said, where you coming from? I'm like, I'm coming from New York. He's like, okay, have you ever had surgery? I'm like, yeah, I did. I had it in New York, but I wasn't put to sleep. This is going to be my first time getting put to sleep for, like, a surgery like this. And he's like, oh, okay, let me guess. You went to Gold's Plastic Surgery? Like, now you're trying to play in my face because I would never, ever go to Gold. So now you play. I didn't like that. Like, if there's so many surgery places in New York. It's so much going on. Like, why would you ever play in my face and think that I went to Gold's Plastic Surgery? Like, it was just given, like, you're trying to be funny. I'm like, I would never go to Gold's Plastic Surgery, actually. I actually went to a double board certified plastic surgeon who works at one of the top surgical groups in the world. And he normally doesn't perform surgeries awake, but he did make an exception for me because I was scared of general anesthesia at the time. He like, oh, okay. I'm like, yeah. So now he puts in the IV. When he puts in the IV, he put it in like, you know when somebody know what they're doing. You will always know when a nurse or anybody knows what they're doing by if they inject the needle into your vein and if it hurts or not. Like a person who really knows what they're doing, when they inject something into your vein, it really should be almost painless. Like if it hurts, like that person didn't inject the needle properly. So he puts the IV in, it was so painful. All of a sudden, he ends up walking out and my the IV bag, the clear IV bag, started to be filled with my blood. So I'm like, I'm, I was, I've been on IV before. Like, I've gotten an IV hydration treatment, all types of stuff. My blood don't be in a bag. So I'm like, what is going on? So I get up. I'm like, excuse me. Excuse me. I call the lady. I'm like, hi, my blood is in the bag. She's like, okay, yeah, yeah, don't worry. Don't. They's like, they talk Spanish and they just want you to shut up. She don't even know I'm here for promo either. So she just treating me like how they would treat any other customer who didn't have a following, right? So she like, oh, you're fine, you're fine, don't worry, don't worry. I'm like, no, I'm like, I don't think this is fine. She like, don't worry, it happens all the time. I'm like, okay, so then I seen another girl walk by. I'm like, excuse me, like, I have blood in my IV. She's like, don't worry, that's regular. I'm like, okay. So in my head, at this point, I'm just like, I don't feel like this is regular. I'm looking on Google and stuff like that. They was just saying, oh, your blood can go into the IV, but it wasn't saying nothing like it should. It was, I couldn't really Google or find the exact answer to what was happening or whatever. So I was just like getting annoyed. And I'm like, you know what? They, they work here. They go through this all day, see a whole bunch of surgery cases. Maybe I'm bugging and maybe this is regular. So anyway, the, the anesthesiologist ends up coming back and I'm like, excuse me, there's blood in the thing. He like, yeah, that's fine. Don't worry about that. I mean, it's your blood. I mean, it's fine. I'm like, okay. Next thing you know, fast forward, my surgeon comes in to mark me. He like, what's going on with your IV? What? He, no, that has to change. And I'm like, okay, that's what I thought because when I kept telling them that there was blood in my IV, they kept saying that that's regular. He's like, that's not regular. That has to change. So now he tells his nurse, oh, go get so-and-so to come change this out. Anyway, he mocked me. I'm not going to lie. The surgeon, he's nice. He's professional. But, like, all of this stuff is, like, annoying. You understand? Like, your staff is unprofessional. The person putting me to sleep doesn't know what they're talking about. Clue doesn't know what they're doing. That's very scary because that's the person who puts you to sleep like that's the scariest part to me and the scariest part for most people so you being this great surgeon is great or whatever but like this is a red flag so he comes in you know he was really fast um he was nice you know he marked me up it, it just felt fast like I could tell he do this all day every day it wasn't that personable but I mean at the end of the day he did what he needed to do he just marked me up he saw my body he was like listen you don't have a lot of fat you got lipo before so you know what we may think is fat it could be scar tissue and this is going to be a tough case you know i'm gonna try my best to get as much fat out of you and make it but as projected as possible but you know you don't have a lot of body fat and it was just like that was it he marked me up boom he was out of there next thing you know the general anesthesiologist comes back in to switch on my IV. and now the IV looks regular and clear after they do all of that, after they mark me up, that I'm still waiting in for like another hour and 30 minutes. I'm like, nah, what's going on now? So now I called the lady. This is when I called the lady. And I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm still waiting and it's 9.45. She's like, what? No, this is crazy. You were supposed to be done by now. Da -da -da. After I made that call, now they coming to get me and now they're ready for the surgery. 
But now, mind you, you guys know that I had a caretaker, right? So the caretaker, I'm not going to lie, this is no shade because she's probably going to watch this or whatever. But she was a nice girl, I'm not going to lie. But at the end of the day, like, I feel like what we agreed to wasn't done. And I'm not going to lie, I did not reach out to her and tell her how I feel yet. But it's like, why do I have to tell you, girl? You know... You know what your job was. I know what my job was. And what's understood really don't have to be explained. And that's no shade. And this right here is why people don't be liking me. But seriously. But anyway, so she was nice or whatever. But at the end of the day, like, she offers packages. She have a 12-hour package. And it's a 12-hour after surgery care. So 12 hours after your surgery, you're supposed to be cared for. Now, mind you, my surgery was supposed to be at 5 o'clock in the morning. But I, I kept calling her, giving her updates. Like, hey, they didn't start me. You know, don't worry about it. I don't even know when I'm going into surgery. She was like, no problem. That happens a lot. Just call me right before they take you into surgery. Like, right, right before so that I could have um, a window to know when to come get you. And, you know, so, you know, just make sure you call me. I was like, no problem. I definitely will. So I had already updated her or whatever. So then I literally called her at like 9 o'clock like, hey, I'm going into surgery right now. She said, okay. So boom. So from 9, you know, my surgery is only going to be like two hours, he said. So 9, 10, 11, you know, I should be out of that surgery by 11. So from after 11, my 12 hours should possibly start, if I'm not mistaken. So anyway, I wake up from surgery. So now more of the nightmare. So when I get to the surgery room, it was cool. The doctor just asked me some questions. Like he was over me like, oh, okay, so where are you from? I'm like, New York. And he's like, okay, you ever had surgery? I was like, yeah, I did. And it was like, that's the rest. The rest was history. He tricked me to put me to sleep. Like he was acting like he was having a conversation. And then I was gone. I smelt the smell. That's how I knew he tricked me because I've been this put to sleep before. But as soon as the smell hit my nose, I knew it was a wrap. So I knocked out. Next thing you know, I wake up on the bed. I'm cold. I'm not gonna lie, this experience when I think back at it is so scary. Like I was sh literally on the bed, laying on my stomach, literally just shaking, like looking around. I was just like, I'm so cold. I'm so cold. And I just remember a nurse saying, I know, I know, it's okay. It's okay. So I was just shivering, 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 right? So I'm super cold. Next thing you know, and what's scary is like those drugs are so strong that I don't even remember from being on the bed, laying down on my stomach to shivering to getting on the wheelchair. Only thing I remember is waking up shivering cold and then being wheeled out to a suburban. Now, the suburban that picked me up on surgery was a part of the package deal with my caretaker. But the agreement was like she's my caretaker, so she's supposed to pick me up on surgery with the driver. When I got out of surgery and I was rolled out of surgery, and this is kind of scary because I was just in the care of a driver, which is a man, and it's just like nobody else with me. When I got out of surgery, she wasn't there. It was just him. So I didn't make it a big deal or whatever. I really didn't. I was too drugged up to even give up. But now that I sobered up, things are like, wait, what's going on? So now listen, I get willed out, da 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 I am so drugged up, I never even knows what happened. Like I'm laying, I'm talking to him in the car, uh uh as once I lay down and I finally wake up, I did fly a friend out with me to Miami. So when I wake up, she's telling me like, girl, you don't have no prescriptions. Like you don't have a Percocet prescription. You don't have your, um, they never gave you a prescription. I'm like, what? She like, yeah, they, they sent you home with no prescriptions. I'm like, oh my God, no. So I'm so drugged up that uh, long story short, the, the person that I hired as a caretaker sent my friend to the fucking surgery place to try to go get my prescription. Mind you, this surgery caretaking thing is supposed to pick you up from surgery, pick up your prescription, and monitor you and your vitals. My friend who I flew out should not have been running around. My friend shouldn't be trying to figure out what's going on with the prescription. And you should have been there to have my prescription. So my friend gets to the surgery place. They're like, oh, no, we gave the person who picked her up the prescription, which is the man who picked me up, and that he signed for my prescription. And they showed her the signature. Like, he signed for her Percocets. He signed, and they was like, this happens all the time. Because people try to steal drugs, and y'all try to get extra drugs. So no, we cannot give her no Percocet prescription. And I'm like, yo, what? So my friend is telling me all of this, and this is scary because 
this is just a big liability for somebody because Percocets are so helpful in your healing process. And like, if you get your Percocet prescription stolen or the surgery place for, I, at first I thought it was the surgery place that forgot to give it to the driver. I'm not gonna lie, cause like I said, I was so drugged up. I don't remember them handing him anything, but I'm not even in the right state of mind. I don't even remember getting fuck about the bed. So I am way too drugged up to remember, but this is why my caretaker should have been there. He was at my Airbnb with my friend. So now, at first I'm thinking, okay, this place is so damn unprofessional. They forget to send me my prescription, but they showed my friend a signature. They was like, this, we literally signed her off in the prescription. It's right here. It was signed by the driver. So I'm like, what the heck? So I tell her, I'm like, they're saying that it was signed by the driver. She's like, oh, he's saying that he signed, but that they never gave him a prescription. He did sign, but they didn't give him a prescription. So is a prescription so long story short thank god that i have influence and i'm a fo i have followers because they was telling her like you're not getting a prescription she's gonna have to take ibuprofen or tylenol extra gem because we're not prescribing any more drugs because we already gave it to her and that is so scary for somebody to fly out there and that happens to them but then she had to go in oh she's doing promo this is chanel richie da -da -da, she's here da -da -da. um yeah did not give her they so after all the back and forth they finally give her a pres prescription but they was not going to give it to her they was not not going to give it to her and i definitely understand why not because that's double dose of percocets and people be selling perks they just be trying to get perks of pop pills when they don't need them so it was just a huge liability and like all of that just makes me so angry because it's like i'm just such a good person and it's like why did all of that have to happen to me like i'm in miami my percocets getting stolen all type of why do stuff like that gotta happen and i'm telling you it's like i'd really be a good person and i just feel like why do like that have to happen like why couldn't i just have a good experience like why 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 the f and then even the guy the driver he was cool and all that and it's like you really can't trust people because i'm not trying to blame him but at the end of the day he signed for my prescription like that's facts and the f like i don't know but it's like where's my perks so thank god I, like i said i have some type of influence or else i would have been in miami in f pain so now my my friend gets the prescription now my friend is running around miami uber to uber to find my prescription because every place is sold out mind you the caretaker that i hired on her site like the package i paid for is prescription pickup and drop off why is my friend going outside uber to uber when you have a car looking for prescriptions like she told my my, my friend she don't want to lose her park and it's like wait i thought that was a part of my package deal like i thought you were picking me up out of surgery i thought that you know you get the prescription pick up and drop off then my prescription was stolen it was just a lot going on long story short my friend is running around miami trying to find percocet but every single pharmacy was sold out of Percocet so that was crazy so you know there was one Walgreens that was right around the corner from my Airbnb that said you know the, the Percocets are sold out but we will have them early in the morning make sure you're here so remember my friend had to go back and forth and go crazy for the prescription so she ended up getting a prescription so she woke up the next morning I ended up having my pre-op appointment so I had to head to my pre-op appointment on my own because she had to be the first person at the pharmacy so the, it was at the same time so i had to my pre-op i was good i took an uber i was gucci um you know she was at the pharmacy getting my prescription next thing you know she calls me while i'm at my pre-op like oh the pharmacist is going crazy he's saying that he's not filling the prescription and this that. i'm like what what's going on talking about it what it's not filled out properly da, da, da. so i was still at the surgical place so i'm like hi my friend is trying to fill my prescription for the percocet and the pharmacist is saying sh that you know they won't fill it so the nurse practitioner gets on the phone with the pharmacist she has him on speaker she's like hello hi sir um what's the issue you know i am the one who um you know gave that prescription out it's from a vanaplastic surgery from you know written from a surgeon like she was verifying the prescription he starts screaming to the top he's like i don't give a damn he said that you put a stamp on the on the prescription and that he don't take prescriptions with a stamp she was like sir we do a lot of surgeries in and out so instead of our doctor signing they stamp it instead it's just a faster process he's screaming i don't give a damn i'm not getting my license taken away guess what this prescription is not getting filled get off my phone he's wowing i'm like what the hell so all of this is going on so not only step one my prescription was stolen second 
all the Percocets is sold out. Then the one pharmacy that's close to my Airbnb that actually has the prescription, the pharmacist is screaming to the top of his lungs, talking about he not losing his license and that he's not filling the prescription. After the surgery place is on the phone verifying the prescription, he was such a jerk. So long story short, she's like, oh my God, this is crazy. She was like, the, the, the nurse, she was like, my friend owns a pharmacy. Let's call her and see if they have it in stock. I said, okay. So we called and that place had it. So my friend had to get all the way in a, another Uber to go pick up the prescription. She finally, finally gets the prescription. But I ended up getting my prescriptions a day later, which is crazy. That's not what my package included. Like, all, it was just so crazy. So now, the next day, you know, I start getting my massages. Now, my massage lady probably was the best thing ever. I loved her. Like, I'm going to add her again. I loved her services. She was so sweet. She was so gentle. She was a board-certified lymphatic um, drainage specialist. She travels to you. She was just so freaking sweet. I love, love, loved her. So anyway, you know, like I said, she was a board-certified lymphatic drainage specialist. She was did. She was just so gentle, and like I said, she would come to you. My massage, the the surgery place tried to offer me massages, you know, with a package deal, with a promo, all that. But I didn't want to do their massages because one, I don't want to get up and be coming in Ubers every day. Like I'm in pain. I rather the person come to me and do my massages. So and anyway, this massage was a lymphatic drainage specialist. So, I start, so from the moment she started massaging me, she's like, oh my God, your drain is twisted. And I'm like, what? So, I, I was feeling it and then she let me see. I, I got up and I seen it. So, my drain that was put in me ended up twisting. So, it was hard for stuff to drain out of the, you know, hard for it to fully drain. So, then I go to my surgery place the next day. I'm like, hi, my, my drain is twisted. Like, I need this removed because I'm ended, it was the day I was going to leave on a plane. So um, the, the nurses there was so nasty. Mind you, the doctor wasn't there, nothing. They was like, oh, nobody told you, you should have got your massages from us. That's why, you're, I'm like, first of all, my drain is not twisted because of my massage. The day one that my massage therapist, before she even started touching me, she showed me, your drain is twisted under your skin. So I had already seen it. Y'all sitting up here trying to argue with me back and forth about my dream being twisted and that I should have got massages. That's not, like, what are you even talking about right now? Why are you sitting up here telling me, oh, well, you should have got your massages from us? No, no, no. Y'all so worried, that, like, you're so focused on money right now. Take this drain out. So I'm like, take the drain out. They're like, oh, we're not removing drains. Drains are not supposed to come out on day three. This I'm like, well, it's twisted. And I fly home and all of this stuff. So they going back and forth. They talking all types of in Spanish I don't even know what they saying so anyway I end up calling the lady I'm like hi my drain is twisted I get on a flight in a few hours nothing is draining out the drain is literally twisted under my skin like it needs to be removed she's like really it's twisted I'm like yes it's twisted so now again it's this promo now she, I got a put on speaker she talking to them in Spanish they looking at me like I'm stupid all types of stuff like this shit was so crazy Long story short, after me, because even after I got off the phone with the lady, she said, I told them to remove the drain, okay? I said, okay. Even after I got off the phone with the lady, they were still acting like they didn't want to remove the drain after she just told them to remove the drain. Long story short, I had to keep going crazy. My friend had to step in. Then they finally cut out the damn drain. Now, I'm on my way to the airport. I get a call from the doctor. He like, what's going on with you? I'm like, what do you mean what's going on with me? He like, you got your drain taken out? Like, why would you remove your drain? I'm like, well, my drain was twisted under my skin. He like, no, it was not. No, it was not. I'm like, you didn't see me. You, you, you never even seen the drain. Like, you can't say that it wasn't. I literally saw it and it was. He like, I've never had a client take out a drain before five days and um this is crazy hopefully this way that he said hopefully you make it home safe because first of all you're flying back on day three mind you your coordinator told me to fly back on day three when i told him i was leaving on day three he was like what who who like why are you flying back i'm like your coordinator you're the the general manager of this surgery place literally told me to book my flight from monday to friday he's like i'm gonna have to talk to her because that's not okay so it's all this miscommunication and i like i had to leave because First of all, the caretaker was already gone. Oh, 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 and the caretaker, remember guys, it was for 12 hours. My caretaker ended up leaving that day at like 6 o'clock. Mind you, she was at the Airbnb from like 12 1 and she left at 6. This is a 12 hour package. How are you leaving at like 6 p.m.? He's like, hopefully you make it home safe. You're leaving on day three, you're taking out drains, 
and you know hopefully you take your antibiotics and all this stuff so he just i didn't like what he said and i had him on speaker and my my friend was like that's crazy how he just spoke to you i'm like yeah that's crazy and i'm not gonna lie he ruined my nerves a little because just like that's the surgeon that's the professional so for him to be like oh you took out a drain but the drain was twisted talking about hopefully you make it home and and that was just scary like my anxiety started going through the roof i just got surgery so when i get to the airport my nurse is just everywhere just hearing him say that like it's certain ways when you're a medical professional that you have to know how to word things and talk to people he also even said like i was like are you think i was like do you think i'm gonna be okay to leave on day three this was at my pre-op i'm like because you know that's what genesee told me and you know i already have everything booked like it's no way i could say it. he was like well that's just stupid it's stupid and it's like even that like as a medical professional like you gotta know how to revert things like even if in your heart you feel like it's stupid you shouldn't say that and even if in your heart you hope i get home safe like i don't even like how that was said like it's just like it just made my nerves shoot through the roof. So when I get to the airport, flying was so terrible. I hated it. Like, I hated it. As soon as I got to the airport, I, I just got off the phone with the surgeon with him saying those words. And I have I had bad anxiety. I've been working on it, but it just kicked in. So, like, I'm with my friend. I'm like, is the floor shaking to you? She's like, no, it's not. The floor is not shaking. I was like, are you sure? She's like, I'm sure. The floor is not shaking. So I was feeling like like shaking, like I just was losing my belt. I felt dizzy. I had to go sit down. I couldn't even wait on the line to check my bags. I had to have her wait on the line with my suitcase. And when they was ready to check the bags, I had to walk over there. I just felt so crazy. Then I had a wheelchair. I had to get the wheelchair. I was wheelchaired throughout the whole airport. Um, I was just feeling so dizzy that I was just walking around the airport trying to move my legs because I knew I was going to get on the plane. And that was the nightmare, guys. Like, do you hear all of that? Like, based on the reels I posted, based on the two vlogs I posted, you guys probably wouldn't have think that I went through all of that. So to sum this all up, like, I do love my results. I do. I don't regret getting the surgery, but I would not go back to that place to get surgery. I would not hire the same people that I hired. And that's no shade to anybody. Like I said, the doctor, is a he's a nice guy. He's a great surgeon. His work is great. But it's just like, I, for me, just you being nice or a good person or good at what you do is more important. That's, that's not the most important thing. Like, how you treat people, how your staff is, the whole experience matters to me. And it just, it didn't pass the vibe check. Like, a lot of people didn't pass the vibe check. So, it's like, this is the real tea right here. Hopefully, this helps some people make the right decisions. Like I said, invest in your body. Get what you want. Do research. Like I said, no amount of research could have stopped me from going through what I went through. It's just like, real life experience. Just like, it is what it is. Um, but, see, what I researched is what I got. Like, I knew my surgeon. I knew I was going to wake up off that surgery table. I knew he didn't have no depths. I knew I was healthy for the surgery, and all of that was a clear. It was more so, like, bedside manner, not being organized, um, just, just a lot. But I hated that I had to go through that. Like, my first surgery was just so much more professional. When you think about the money I spent and, like, where I went, it was literally just more worth it. Like, the whole experience was more worth it. So, I love you guys. Hopefully, this helps. Yeah, no, honesty is the best policy. I hope there's no shade. Nobody feels away. Listen, anybody, if you were a part of anything you see this, it's no shade. It's like, I have to be real with my following. I just have to. Like, I cannot sell lies and dreams to people. Like, but I love y'all.